And three, two, one, boom. And we're back with another episode of Crack Gamers. This episode is sponsored by Zen Real Clothing Co. Pick up your tees and or accessories or just check out the free Zen Real Radio at Zen Real, Zen Real Clothing Co. Com. Use SG Podcasts at checkout for 20% off select items. Okay, this is part two of our new normal, new normal series. We left off last week talking about um, the craziness that was happening. We couldn't get into everything, so we split it up into two parts. This one, hopefully, we'll talk about more of the opportunities, but I still have some of the stuff um, lingering from my list from last week that we didn't get to. So first mm-hmm. off, uh, masks. Vish, what do you think? You think we're going to wear masks forever? No, not forever. All right, well, obviously not forever. Okay, okay, take that back. Do you think we're going to be wearing masks until we get a vaccine? Uh, like, that's what it looks like right now. Uh, since if they keep recommending it, people will wear it, right? Totally, totally. So I'm wondering, like, you know how it's like a recommending? Is yeah. that like a strong recommendation? Do you think there's any opportunity for like them to in place uh, to put into place like um, like uh, what do you call that? Not like a t- I guess like a ticket, you know? So it's not a strong recommendation like that. Like by law, you don't have to wear it, but um, private retailers have the right to. Um, like set up rules that you can't enter without a mask, right? Oh, really? Okay, okay. So that's what they did. So I remember the first time I ever saw this was in uh, H-Mart. I Mm -hmm. mean, like they didn't enforce it. Like people were, like I saw the sign and I was like, okay, I'm just going to go back and get the mask, right? Right. Just out of courtesy because I tried to like go in and like everyone was wearing a mask. It made me feel really awkward. But then like Mm -hmm. as I was shopping, there were a couple of other people who weren't wearing masks. So I was like, okay, so it's not like, super enforced i guess but like maybe they're trying to follow suit for america because i know in certain places in america it's like you you actually cannot enter unless you wear a mask yeah so is it, you think that's what they're i think there, i think there are some places here like that like they will have they're telling you to wear a mask before you enter it it's interesting that in the future well i mean in the foreseeable future um masks are going to become like such a staple you know i went i went grocery shopping yesterday and one of the one of the cars beside me well, actually a few cars they had their mask on the uh the rear view mirror yeah i saw that and i was yeah. like i was like oh wow this is like becoming a thing and it's cool because like like different people are wearing different types of masks like i guess they're buying it off of like etsy or whatever they're making their mm-hmm. own you know they're making yeah. these cool like like designer masks you know, mm-hmm. yeah. I wonder, like, because in in Asia, masks are very common. You know, if you're sick, you're just gonna wear one. Mm-hmm. I wonder if we might adopt that practice here. Like, what, what do you think? I think it might. Uh, there might be an increase in that. Um, personally, I just don't. I won't, but I don't know. I, I I think that like it's inevitable to see an increase in people wearing masks, but. But you personally are not preferent towards wearing a mask. Yeah. I actually like the anonymity of it because, like, like especially when I head back to, like, our area and, like, I know so many people, so I'm, like, uh, try and, like, avoid. So, like, mm-hmm. wearing a mask is at least <laughs> a barrier in that. Like, I'm not using it for, like, like um, germs. I'm using it more right. for, yeah, like, yeah. like show, social escapism, I guess, you know? Mm-hmm. For yeah. me, it's just like another thing to carry. I don't like to carry things. Mm, like I want sure, to sure, sure. be as minimalistic as possible. But so you, in that way, you know, mm-hmm. there's like a lot of like hate towards masks too. Like um, on the on Joe Rogan experience, like Eddie Bravo was calling them like diapers on your face, and I was like, oh wow, <laughs> there it is. It's like you're getting, you're starting to get like a not racism, but like maskism. You know what I'm saying? It's like. Yeah, no, it's just it's just a weird thing. Like we're as a society, we're not used to that, right? So, whenever we're doing something that's not of the norm, we we will make fun of it, right? Totally, totally, totally. Do do you see it as like um like a it because of like legalities around it, right? Like if they start forcing you to wear certain things or like forcing you to get tested, doesn't that kind of seem like? breaking your 
your freedoms. Yes. You know yeah. what I mean? It's yeah. a little weird. It's 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 interesting to see from this whole thing as like an exercise how much lack of power there is because you like you think there's a certain level of freedom, but then when push comes to shove, it's like we could shut everything down if we want to. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like it's like an it's like a display of true power. Right, yeah. yeah. But it's like it's for depends on the cause, but I do see what you're saying, yeah. But it's weird too cuz like this whole time, like even before the whole COVID thing, I was mm-hmm. saying how another example of the exercise of power is taxes, you know. Yeah. You could almost you could almost like classify what they're doing now in that vein of taxes. You know, it's like it's for the greater good. We also mm-hmm. need to do our part, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like because we have to pay taxes on everything, it's like you don't really have that much power. Like you, you're, you still have to, no matter how much freedom you think you have, it's like you're still limited to the freedoms allotted to you. It's not like we're actually free, you know? Yeah, no, but you're paying those taxes to get those allotted freedoms, right? In like freedoms in the sense of like each society is a bit different, but like what you're paying into, right? What are you getting, gaining out of the country or the, the local area that you're at? Right. So like, like, like a give and take, it's like, yeah, you're here, but we're offering you like fixing roads and all that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, how would you, how would you classify? Is it like a collective, it, it's like this collective pot we're putting our money into. And then that pot is used to like do things that we don't want to necessarily pay for ourselves. Yeah. You know, so it's just, it's like doing, yes. Yeah. It's like that. It's like, but growing the city. So you need money to do that. Right. So that is from those taxes where you do that. So why we can have, why we have the level of transit system or whatever that is that helps people maneuver around the city much more easily, but you're all paying into that. Right. 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 If you do it individually, I think that's like the libertarian way. I don't think people would put money in if they don't have to. Hmm. I agree with that. Yeah, totally. I I mean, especially if you don't have that much money already, like why would you be adding, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. That I, I do like that in a way. It's like if you build it into the products, mm-hmm. you don't actually have to worry about who's going to pay for this. It's like the product money is going to pay for this. Yeah, you know, well, one of the guesses is that in the future there's going to be a higher tax for us because they got to pay back the debt that they paid to all of us. You know. Yeah. So, yeah, there. This is what they say is it might be like a. It, this will have an impact like generationally. Okay. Uh, uh, like, there because of the like all this money we're spending, it might affect like hours retirement or like that kind of stuff i don't know like if they oh, really, to push, eh? the, wow. push the date of retirement like these sort of things are generational impacts they they i saw this morning that people were talking about um uh, bringing back being bringing back grade 13 yeah like as as like a generational thing like we were just talking about they mm-hmm. this could affect like so many things going forward you know I just don't like I don't know uh, how that would work even with grade 13 because it's like you're mainly just talking about the people who are in grade 12 now right true Uh, true true true. right right, but they're already gone they're already going to university next year so I don't I don't see a reason to bring back grade 13 but yeah like actually in, in keeping with that university thing could you imagine being the first like um like like your first year going to university mm-hmm. and it's yeah. online, you know? You get in, like, no frosh week. Although I didn't go to frosh or anything, but, like... N- nor did I. Yeah, right? So it's like... But, you know, a lot of people are craving that university experience. You know what I'm yes. saying? Yes, yes. But in some ways, it could potentially also mean saving money. So if you're doing online, if all your classes are online, you can just... You don't have to live on rest. Yeah, that's totally, totally. But, like, I know, like, a lot of people want that mm-hmm. experience, you know? They're, like... Right, yeah, there is a significant percentage of people that want that, too. That's why they hate half-brush, right? People do but, go to that, so... But it's so funny how it's, like, such, like, a societal norm, 
you know, um, we're placing our emphasis on things that aren't related to education, whereas you universities were made for education you know yeah but it's it's, like i think it's okay yeah it is education but it's also uh, where you meet new people and sometimes these become long-time friends right i yeah yeah i i I think that's it's it's true for a lot of people it's just not true for us i guess but (laughs) true if you look at it percentage wise it is it is true for a lot of people remember how i said that um when there's like lifestyle marketing. So insurance companies, when I was working in Hong Kong, they like enlightened me to this. So insurance mm-hmm. companies, um, they try and sell you a lifestyle narrative in right. order to get you to fit into these boxes and follow a certain trend, right? Mm-hmm. Like go to university, get your first car, get your first job, get a house, get kids, do it all over again, you know? Yeah, yeah. And like... It's interesting that with this whole university experience now, because most likely their first semester is going to be online and they won't have frosh and all that stuff, it's like you're really seeing that life is just a narrative that's been pushed onto us, you know? And I think that's where you and I were like, we jumped outside of the norm, being like, I don't think that's valid just because you're telling me that I should like this doesn't mean I should like it, you know? But I don't. I, I think it's it's a it's it's a mixed bag here because it's there are different types of people out there, right? That are into different things. So people that want to make new friends or like you're going to a new school or you know what I mean, like. Right. Yeah. yeah no, I see, I see your point. I think it's a mixed bag. Like some people may have fallen for that narrative story, but then there's others that like that are that engage in that kind of stuff, right? That they want that kind of stuff. Right. 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 Naturally. Yeah. So it, it, it's because it, it, these things are, you can say it's more for like people who are, uh, what's the word? Like people who are conformists. Um, no, no, no. Like, <laughs> uh, not conformists. No, like introverts and extroverts. Right. It's like those oh, active I see what you're extrovert saying. type of thing. Like, right. Right, right, right. And staying at home or like like online is very introverted sort of type of thing so but but you know what's interesting too though like it's really hollywood that pushed that that like narrative upon us Mm -hmm. you know like nobody nobody said that university and college is going to be like x y and z it's just hollywood was like this is what you can expect you know because we've watched so many going away to college movies you know yeah. So the people probably grew up and they're like, oh, I want that to be my life, you know, like neighbors. For yeah, example, possible. you know. Yeah. 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 It's just weird because like, especially in this like whole COVID time, we're starting to see the unraveling of like pushed upon social narratives that are being broken because we can't actually achieve them anymore. You know? Yeah, the and, new, but the new narratives will be made, right? No, totally. That, that's what I mean. It's like, but then... Yeah. Like, I guess mm-hmm. you can you can float on with this and you could be like, okay, new narratives will be made. But at the same time, it's like, I'm more so questioning what does a narrative really mean, you know? Do I yeah. have to follow X, Y, and Z? Not really. Well, yeah. You know? Right, yeah. I, I think, yeah. I think yeah. what really yeah. hit home is uh, Elon Musk because he went to school in Canada and he was saying that, like, universities are just uh, – like it's it's not really about higher education. It's more like a entertainment, you know. And like, mm-hmm. can I live on my own? Stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. it, it's more so about like social stuff and actually achieving knowledge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At some people, I don't know if it's most, but yeah, Elon <laughs> Musk on another level. Right? That's true. <laughs> but shouldn't we all aspire to be like the best of human kind? You know what I'm saying? Not not everyone can. So. <laughs> I'm watching a new Elon Musk podcast that came out like a month ago. Yeah, I think. Did you see it yet? He's like at a round table. He like invited these people to his house, and then he's having a podcast with all of them. Oh, I think I saw that one. Yeah, it's yeah. really good. It's really good. He pushed like. It's interesting that Elon Musk. So he so they asked him like this question. I had no idea what he majored in, but he majored in economics and physics. Mm-hmm. So that's why, because it's like, how do you know so much about how the world works? Yeah, because he's an economics degree. 
as well as a physics degree, you know? Right. So it's like that scientist, like he's, he's actually Tony Stark. He gets the business side, but also the science side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's just like a right. slight tangent. But uh, so, so do you think that there's like, um, like a new world? I know we spoke about this yesterday when we hung out, but like, there's like a new world that's changing right in front of our eyes, you know, mm -hmm. and like, uh, like uh, not a new world, but like a new way of governance, you know, because, because cause if you look at the way like government is set up, right, or like law, you have to look at the precedent, right, what happened beforehand, and then you use that to push your argument in current times, right? Yeah. But because things are shifting so rapidly and they're letting stuff go it's like the precedent of now could be used in the future mm -hmm. do you get what i'm saying so it's like it's like if something not as bad happens in the future they're just like well it could be like covid so we'll use this precedent to get our law passed you know right yeah like if like flu 2.0 comes out in the future like let's say we've solved covid and then flu mm -hmm. 2.0 happens and then they're like Okay, let's just lock everyone down. We did it already in COVID. We should yeah. we should be able to do it again, you know. Uh, yeah, I I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I I don't know. It, it it you just really gotta see how it plays out and what particulars are the situation because, um, they had to shut down, as per whatever guidelines. But like you were, gonna hurt the economy in the. Sh um, like you don't know how much you've hurt the economy, but it's going to be hurt big time. Yeah, for sure, for sure. They they are talking about um, the the upcoming housing crisis 2.0. So like we had one in 2008, but then there's gonna be another one because like, and this is a great example. And I I well not a great example. This is actually what's gonna happen. I didn't even think about it, but like um, Airbnbs that are all being rented out can't be paid their mortgages or like people that are renting out their house to subletters, you know, like people yeah. that like live in your basement and then, and then they can't pay who are in the basement. And then that's going to end up affecting their ability to pay back their mortgage. So you're mm -hmm. going to have this domino effect of like a housing collapse again, you know? Yeah. Which is but it's kind of freaky. Yeah, it's, it's not just housing. It'll be, it's going to be more than that. It's not like, it'll be worse than 2008. Yeah, I think. yeah, totally. So, because it's not even it's not even housing; it's like renting renting properties too, right? Because like stores yeah. can't pay the rent, so what are you gonna yeah. do? You know? Yeah, and these companies shutting down so many stores—that's another thing. A lot of vacant lots. Totally, and and I think that's what we're gonna see post this. It's like not only was the COVID issue there, but like, you know, what do we do after? The solution yeah. is gonna be hard. Like, like. Uh, really in some ways, mm -hmm. I think it's it's um, some of these things that are you know um, going out of business and stuff. It's it was inevitable before. It just would have taken a bit longer time. All I think what COVID has done is just increase that rate, right? Like a lot of these stores would have been gone in maybe another four to five years, maybe because right, everything right, right. Be ready. Like it's just now had a huge increase in people going towards online right right um, oh, yeah totally totally a brick and mortar is like totally gone everything's it like we might look at the future as like pickup locations now you buy everything online you just go to the pickup location yeah you know but it was already happening right the, these things that was already happening it was just like they knew that was going to be where the, the trend would go. Yeah, totally yeah, totally totally that totally, was yeah. the trend and it's just this just um um upped it, it up got us there Maybe. quicker it got us there quicker yeah yeah because i want so like I, yeah like a lot of these stores already weren't doing well uh, right especially right, right. competing with with the big guys like amazon like they're really affecting a lot of these other companies and amazon seeing a huge uptake but that would have happened naturally anyways he Totally, I agree. And remember, we were saying that this this was a great validation when I heard it on the Joe Rogan podcast. I was like, all right, cool. Like Brian Callum was talking about it, but um, before we were saying that in the future we think that there's going to be 
conglomerates, like uh, not conglomerates, but like certain major companies that run everything. Like you're just going to have like Amazon, Google, Walmart, mm-hmm. you know, and then all of these small mom and pop shops will be gone. They'll control the entire market, you know, and yeah, yeah it, it, it like that was the projected future. You know, it just seemed logical. Mm -hmm. And and Brian Callen, he brought that up. He's like, that's what it's going to look like in the future. And I was like, oh, yeah, our prediction was correct. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, I get what you're saying. That would have been put off for years. But now we're like face to face with it. Yeah. Because of this, this like global pandemic. But do you remember back in 2008 when they were trying to fix the, the bubble? And then I think it was like 2012. Um, Obama had this choice to make. Either he he doesn't take a bailout. I don't I don't remember the exact specifics, but like unless you do, and it's like perfect, like remind me. But do you remember like Obama was either going to sign this thing and then accept a bailout, which would push back the year that the crash would happen to like twenty twenty something, or he would accept no bailout and then they would have the crash right then. Like, it was, like, it was all over CNN, and it was, like, we were watching it, like, is he going to go for the deal or not go for the deal? Yeah, there was many, like, the bailout questions were happening at that time, and um, that was the, uh, bailing out the banks, I think that was the thing, or GM or whoever yeah, it was. So, something like that, yeah, yeah, but it would, like, it would affect the global economy, like, either the global economy would crash at that moment, or if he accepted, like, an extension, but then he ended up accepting an extension which makes sense but it's almost like with that extension and we're coming up to it when the money will be due and you they won't be able to pay it back that's what they're saying like in the future mm-hmm. they won't be able to pay it back but if you extend it at least we have more of a grace period to like try and figure things out but then with this whole covid thing it's like another thing that got revved up is this the debt you already owe plus the debt yeah. you're incurring right now mm-hmm you know, so th- like yeah. that's why. That's why I think. But we're yeah, in agreement. what is what does the debt mean? Like America now is like how many trillions in dollars now? I mean, like especially with what's happened now, right? I it's already increased. That to, to, I think debt because like I think debt is more of a bargaining chip now. I don't think debt is real. You know, it's more mm-hmm. like because if you're going cu- country to country, where it's like America is like yeah. trillions and trillions of dollars. Can owes like trillions of dollars, but like no, we're not expecting each other to pay it back. What you're doing is you're paying the minimum, and then the more debt you have against another country is the more you owe them, and the more yeah. bargaining power they have to be like, okay, pay me back now. And if you can't pay yeah. it back, it screws up your economy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like, mm-hmm. it's like if you think about it on basic lenders, you know, like if you lend me money. Like you lend me five bucks and then I lend two bucks to another person who has a great idea and promises a return on that two dollars. And yeah. then when it comes time to pay, I'm like, hey, man, where's the two dollars plus of the return? Because I have to pay you back mm-hmm. and we can't and he can't pay me. I can't pay you. We're having this like merry-go-round of who owes who and then it just breaks the system. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what we're facing right now. It's like, it's like you lent to me, I lent to someone else, he lent to someone else. Now we're now we're trying to back pedal our way to like pay each other back. Yeah, yeah. So that's that was what happened in two thousand eight. Like it's it's a whole bigger thing, but it was it something that let, happened in the nineties that what Bill Clinton did triggered that to oh, really happen. No yeah. way, really. So like, do you know the uh, specifics? There, yeah, so there was this thing called Glass Steagall, uh, like it's like for the banks, basically, they cannot um, uh, bid with your money; they can only bid with the profits they make. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That's that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, that's exactly so, what I'm talking about. Yeah. So Bill Clinton, when he removed the Glass Steagall, that means banks can play with your money. Oh, and that is exactly why we're here. Yeah. Huh. You know, when I was taking economics in, in school, like the class, they mm-hmm. they brought 
they they were explaining this to us like how debt works right like Mm-hmm. like what i just explained to you but like on a very dumb like obviously their their version was way more difficult i just tried to dumb it down yeah, but like yeah. that is essentially what's going on right like lenders owing lenders and but they didn't mention this deal this glass deagle thing or whatever so well like, yeah but because i went like i, I yeah. joined school like way later since it was signed but it's interesting how like one well yeah when thing, you joined i think it was already gone right bill clinton is the one that removed it so. Oh, he removed that glass eagle thing. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, he removed it. It was. It oh, was it was in place it. to protect. It was in place. Yeah, exactly. It was in place before to protect uh, people's money. Oh so. my god! Wow, that's yeah. pretty crazy. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's, that's pretty why crazy. No issue. That's why there was for like a long time. There was no problems with uh, bailing out the banks and stuff because that that. The glass eagle was put in there. It was I don't know when it was put in. It was it was a while ago, but when it was removed um, in the nineties, sometime in the nineties, that's when it triggered all this. Interesting. Like it was you, you know, when you're taking money out of your line of credit, like so, if you have mm-hmm. a line of credit and you're withdrawing money, it tells you don't use this line of credit money to like go into like gambling or like um mm-hmm. or like put it in a stock market or something you know what i mean they uh-huh. warn you against it but it's legal like you can do it like again they don't know what you're doing with your money but like so what you're essentially saying is that was a restriction that they had in place whereas like that's stupid investing to take out a loan in order to try and make back money Mm-hmm. And so the the glass eagle thing was in place initially to stop people from doing that. No, 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 uh, no. Glass eagle. It, it was the rules for the banks. No, no, right? but, but but what I'm saying is like, right? But I'm bringing it to like a personal level. Yeah. How like, but that's essentially what they did. They took out, they took our money. Yeah. Like us yeah. would be like the line of credit. Right. Okay. Okay. So they're yeah. like they're using our us, aka line of credit, to mm-hmm. invest elsewhere to hopefully Someone, make yeah. more money. Right. Yeah. But it's weird because it's like if they're doing that, but we're getting told, like, don't do this. Like when you when you're mm-hmm. withdrawing or whatever, it's like don't do this. It's it's weird that they're doing it, but we're not doing it. Yeah, or we're right. not. They're they're advising us not to do it. You know. Mm-hmm. It's like well, you're not yeah, even taking your the, own advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the rule in America, or that was the thing. I don't know what it is here in Canada. Mm. I didn't look at all that, but okay. So maybe was, maybe that's why I have the restriction. Like it's like it warns you not to do that. I think it's illegal. Actually, I don't know. Is it illegal to do that? Maybe it's not illegal. That. But I remember like when I was getting that line of credit. I think the bank person told me, and then I had to like sign something. It's mm-hmm. like don't don't do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. But yeah, that that would explain why we're in this predicament we are in now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but we're shutting down the economy was not also like was not a part of the plan. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz that messes up the entire structure. Interesting. Uh, yes. yeah. So, um I heard this other but, thing is Oh yeah, yeah, what were you saying? No, like I think I read, heard it yesterday like th- like Toronto, uh, um, they don't have money for all these services. Like the amount of money that they need, they're asking the provincial and federal governments to um, essentially bail them out in a way. Um, mm, because right, right, right. like the way that it works is like, if we can't get the money, we're going to need to like hike up the property taxes. Right, right, right. We're going to have to cut like our uh, TTC transit in half. Uh, like gonna, speaking uh, of that too like i saw that the trafficking like their like like sex trafficking they stopped the funding for it oh okay so I like so the, there's another example of it it's like it's like you are gonna have to start cutting back in order to pay these things you yeah know? yeah and yeah again it's like you have no no idea what is going to come out of this 
mm-hmm. when you owe money. Because it's like when you owe money, it's like, how are you going to pay that back? You have to do something, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it'll be an interesting to see. I don't know. I, I, all right, my prediction right now is mm-hmm. we're going to merge economies with a country. Uh, like, I mean, the most obvious one would be since we're part of NAFTA, um, merging with, you know, America and like Mexico. But I feel like that's. Where I, don't, we're... I don't know what that means. What do you mean by merging? Like, like. Like maybe maybe like uh, the EU. Mm-hmm. You know. Like, oh, I like. Okay. Like like how, all of these countries are a part of the EU because right. they need their dollar to be high. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's almost like I kind of feel like. When push comes to shove, you might need to ally up. You know. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't know how that works. Exactly. So, like, uh, so basically, like, if Canada owes money to a different country, okay, no, no. All right, right, so, so right. Put, let's put it back to people terms. So, like, I took money from you, and then mm-hmm. that money I gave to somebody else who was supposed to give me a return, right? Right. And then that person who gave money to somebody else to get that return, if he doesn't get the return, he's like, hey, let's pull our money together, our money and our resources, let's ally up and we can give enough, we can have enough money to give back to the, to me. See what I'm saying? It's like Mm -hmm. when you owe money and you can't pay it, you have to do something to pay it back. So those people I gave, that person I gave the money to, if he can't pay me back and he's like, oh, this person's going to kill me. Like think about like Ozark drug cartels. This person's going to kill me if Mm -hmm. I don't give me the money he's going to try and ally up some people to pull their money together. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, somewhat, yeah. So it's but like... These, so these like, are not my best... Uh... No, no, totally. Like, <laughs> I'm just, it's just a prediction. I'm just... That's just what I right. can see. Because, like, if we keep spending money at this rate and we can't pay ourselves back... But, I mean, like, at the same time, Trudeau's like, we have lots of money in reserve. So it's like, maybe... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. But then, all right, think about future investing too. So this was brought up in a, in that same podcast with Brian Callen. He's like, um, investing is all about future prediction, right? Can this person pay me back? Right? But then yeah. when you see when you see a country so quickly to shut everything down, it's like, is it smart to put my money in here? Because what if it happens again? What if COVID returns? Like, why would I spend my money to build a business here, you know? Mm-hmm. I think for a short term, it might seem like that. But I think over the long term, these are like, it's like one of those things when you design a building, you design it for those 100-year storm. So it's like one of those random True. events. That happen. But, 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 like it's... but also in terms of future investing, it's like, so investing means you're going to give money to help a business, right? Mm-hmm. So we could actually see all future investing go purely digital now. You know, like people are like, oh, the safest bet is to invest our money in digital platforms. Right. You yeah. Know? So then that that creates a new world naturally because it's like, well, these businesses don't have any money to survive. So they're dead. The only ones that are surviving are tech companies. Yeah. So I guess maybe more investment in tech companies. So, so, I mean, that's how we could, that's how we're seeing something reshape in front of our eyes. It's like, Mm -hmm. it's like we could just be facing a completely digital world coming out of this. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. I want to get into the digitalness, but I have one more, um, one more question. What do you think about plexiglass? You think that's going to stay forever? Because you see in the grocery uh, stores, like, everything's being built. It's like, would you really take yeah. that down, you know? I kind of feel like that's just going to remain there. No, that's that's going to remain there. Yeah, right? Like, rem- it'll yeah. just stay there in case of, like, the flu is going on. Or, like, this is just better for your safety. Well, technically, yes, it is better in, in that sense. You're going to also reduce the spread of the flu, right? Yeah, totally, yeah. Germs, so, yeah. in a way, in a way, yes, they will. that will be kept up. I don't think they'll be removing that. Yeah, yeah, I I feel that too. 
I feel that too. Do, do you see? Okay, so that was my last thing. Let's talk about digital stuff now because this is where I'm super fascinated by. Um, do you see the – so Twitter – but this is kind of funny. So like Twitter is like, okay, everyone can work from home forever now. The CEO, Jack Dorsey. And then, yeah. and then a separate interview, a separate article, they're like, Square also announces this. The funny thing they don't tell you is Jack Dorsey owns both Square and Twitter. So it's <laughs> like, so you think there's a trend. You're like, oh, people are going to work from home. You know, all these big companies, like, but that one guy actually owns both companies. So if he does it for Twitter, of course he has to do it for Square. That's just not fair, you know? Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like... I really do feel like only certain things will be physical. Like you're definitely going to be paid a premium to work in uh, like a grocery store, for example. So like they were saying they were going to increase wages by $4, right? For people who work in grocery stores. Okay. I didn't, did, did, did they do that? I think, I think so. Like, like additional pay maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't hear that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, or maybe I'm getting my fact wrong. Whatever. So, no, no, yeah. might be right. So, so premiums for those, and and like I was saying that before, and it's like that really does seem like where it's going to go. Because in order to venture out in this unsafe territory, you have to pay people, and like you were saying, um, your pay—if you work from home forever, your pay is going to be reflective of that. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, maybe if you want to make more money, you get. I don't know. It's yeah. Because it's weird. It's weird to like go around and see the only places with people fully like open is like department stores and like, you know, fast food stores. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that would be a really weird world to see. Like everyone's at home, and like. The only people actually physically working are department stores and um, fast food stores, restaurants, stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Um, did I, you, yeah. I like it will be like that for a short time or however long this takes, but I don't know if it will last. No, like, but no, no, but will... because because from an HR perspective, right? I could just say I don't feel safe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, no, I don't feel yeah, safe no, going to work. Okay. Yeah, no, no, I understand that. I, I think there will be a, that impact will be there, of course, but there are. I don't think it's it's. In, it'll be easier to do those in the tech world, but I just don't know. There's a lot of other types of businesses that just doesn't run like that. Right. No, totally. Yeah, but that's why I think that maybe there'll be a premium for those businesses where you have to go in. Mm-hmm. You know, because yeah, you're right. It's like, I mean, like. The, the HR thing, that's such an easy ploy. You could just be like, because even right now, it's like, oh, I'm feeling a cough. Come on. Don't have to worry. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. or like, or like, even like, if they're like, okay, we can all go back. Like, I'm so, like, I live with an old person. I don't <laughs> feel safe unless a vaccine is ready. And then the vaccine's ready. I don't consent to having myself be vaccinated mandatorily. Yeah, and you can't fire me because employment law, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like you can totally game the system, is what I'm saying. And I think they know yeah. this, and that's why a lot of tech tech companies will stay solely like remote. Like if you can do your job remote, it's most likely it's just going to stay that way forever. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Did DC um Jack Dorsey also gave um Andrew Yang five million dollars to come up with a case for UBI? Yeah, I saw the headline. I didn't read the article though. But but like like mm-hmm. I was saying, it's like it begins now because we're already doing it, you know? We're already like it makes sense. So if, if you've never heard his platform, I highly recommend checking out the Joe Rogan podcast with him on there because he explains it so well. And I was like, that's actually – because he's a businessman, right? So yeah. he was saying like licensing out places and then the money you get from licensing it out, like the title. So, for example, everyone drives across like the Brooklyn Bridge, right? So mm-hmm. then you just – you sell it to TELUS and it becomes the TELUS Bridge. 
and then all the money from that that like partnership goes towards um goes towards like paying yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes yeah, sense it's like what it's like what you do with naming those arenas right yeah yeah, totally. yeah, yeah, yeah. like we have the rogers center now you know it before it was the sky dome yeah but speaking and of isn't it yeah, well, the it, Rogers Center isn't Rogers Center now, right? It's isn't Scotia B- Scotia Bank Arena or something, or is that a different place? Oh no, it's a different different place. You're thinking about ACC, Air Canada oh, Center. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, ACC is Rogers but Center. It's not now. ACC anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but like, right. but that makes total sense. But like, but see, what happened was that that business got bought out. So it's like, you're just taking that model and all of the profits from that that partnership go towards paying mm-hmm. people. Whereas right now what it is, the profits from that partnership go towards paying ACC owner, you know? Right. Like that money is like internal. Yeah. 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 It's private money. It's not public money. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's why I agree with, I agree with what he's saying. And I, I think there could be a, a solid case for UBI. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean the, the talk about UBI has, especially from this has increased a lot even actually like um working four days a week versus five days a week has also been i work four days it's like it makes sense yeah um i mean like i work four days now because of this covid thing like before oh right it it, it wasn't like i i was doing that before but like it's because of covid Right. Okay. Yeah. So, like, normally they're saying like if we shift everything to four days work week versus five, right? Then we'll so limit the spread. No. Yeah. 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 New Zealand's doing that. Right. Yeah. 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 That, no, I don't know if they're doing that. She was talking about it. She wasn't. Oh, it wasn't for sure. Yeah, it's not a thing that they're doing. It's just like their prime. What I don't know if it's whatever they say over there, but it's their leader said mentioned it in one of her videos or something, and then. People are here like, someone... stoked. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, that I've. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, it's it's a weird adjustment. Like it's only been. Uh, how long has it been? So maybe like four weeks now that I've been on four days, and like okay. it's a weird, it's a weird adjustment because like yesterday I was like I thought it was a Friday. <laughs> and then, well, no, no, sorry, no, no, sorry, sorry. Yesterday I thought it was a Saturday. My bad. I thought yesterday <laughs> yeah. was a Saturday, and I was like, "Oh man, one more day, and I gotta go back to work." But then I was like, right. "Oh wait, no, two more days." You know. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Your mind has to adjust to a three-day weekend, right? Now, could you imagine reversing that order, being like, "Now I want everyone to go back on five days," mm-hmm. or or they might just be like, "Okay, you can take your pay cut." You can you can keep everything the same, or you can jump to five days, and we'll pay you more. It's up to you, you know. Right, right, right. Yeah, weird world. Yeah, I, I, it'd be interesting to see where these things go. So, okay, so we don't have UBI right now, but we have Serb, and um, I feel like mm-hmm. what this is doing is this is supporting a lot of online communities now, like. Like, 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 for instance, that guy, shout out to you if you're listening to this, what's up? But like him talking about wanting to start a podcast and then him mm-hmm. asking me like, oh, how'd you do yours? You know? And it's like, yeah, there's, there's going to be many more creators coming out of this. Cause like, what else can you do? You know, what else are you going to do? Of course, we're going to have online communities, but that also dilutes the current creators no? Yes. In a way. Yes. Right. Because like. <laughs> Like your biggest creator is now competing with a larger market, you know, because everyone's yeah. going to learn how to go online. Yeah, it's more competition. Yeah. Yeah, really fascinating, and like, and and I think that the future, because this was like you know the whole like learn to code thing. Yeah. And like it was like a demeaning thing. I actually think that is going to be a necessity or like not learn to code, but like digital literacy, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like, I feel like digital literacy is going to be super important going forward. 
it was already super important, but like you can get away with it. You like you didn't really need to be that digitally literate. But now, like even for something as simple as like schooling, right? You have to be digitally literate to like set up an account. You know, yeah, log on, yeah. talk to each other. How's it gonna work? Look, it, I think it was already going in that direction, right? Um, just it just got sped up, like you were saying. Yeah, everything just got sped up. I, I feel that's what it is. It's like basically we're trimming off all the things that we didn't really need earlier than we needed to, right? So so again, it's like you're seeing an entirely new world reshape in front of our eyes, and especially the longer that this goes on, you know? Yeah. More and more things will be cut back. Like, oh, one, mm -hmm. th one thing I was thinking is that, like, home care will become more... Like, like I texted you this morning, I'm like, oh, we're going to get some patio stuff for our balcony so we can all hang out there. And, like, um, I was I was like, oh, this is the new thing. It's like people are focusing on their, their homes because they're home all the time. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> That's I'm, true. Yeah. Like, could you – like, let's say this goes on for four more months, okay? And mm -hmm. then people spend all this time building a pattern and a life – and then you're told, like, okay, it's time to go back. Right. You know, like, that, I feel like even in that, it would create an uproar. You know? Like, right, yeah. Like, people, people are like, I don't want to go back. Or, like, I want to keep my Serb. Because I know, like, people who are, like, they're making more off Serb than before and, Serb. Right. You know, like, because yeah. yeah. the, the requirements to get Serb are so loose. You know, it's like, did you make X amount of money? Did you lose your job because of COVID? Whatever, whatever. And it's like, yeah, yeah. you just have to press yes. There's no like, there's no crazy. No, because uh, they, they, yeah, the focus was to give out the money as soon as possible, right? So they, then they will um, look back at all of this uh, after the fact and uh, track all that money. And if like, they'll be taxed on it later, right? Totally, totally. But at the same time, it's like. Yeah. UBI like that's like to yeah, make it basically. that accessible it's yeah. it's essentially UBI it's if, essentially that yeah. if you just do it in perpetuity and you find a way to fund it then we're living in a time of UBI mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah I, I, again I mean, UBI is probably again where it was going to go anyways it's just now sped up I like know. I like that actually that's a really great <laughs> Um, that's a really great perspective you just shared and I didn't even like think of it in that manner. Everything just got sped up. Like everything that we were supposed to be on track for, it just like, like, you know, okay, we were going to have to revisit our 2008 crisis. Boom. We're in it. Uh, we are going to have to revisit the fact that people have to learn digital literacy. Boom. We're in it. We're going to have to face the fact that people want UBI. Boom. We're in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Everything. And teleported it, into the future, right? Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah, that's true. Dude, that's so true. It was it was like that um that thing I was saying, like Blast from the Past, that movie. It's like they were in the bunker and then they came out, they're boom, blasted into the future. Everything they yeah. knew for that amount of years like completely shifted. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is what it is. It's like the new normal is the future. Uh like, I don't know, how how would you say that? It's like <laughs> we, like you know what I'm saying it's like it's like we went into this whole COVID thing in hibernation and then when we come out of it this new normal is like a fast tracked future that took place over like X amount of months yeah you know yeah. like you really got to see the restructuring right before your eyes as things every single day things are changing every single day new mm -hmm. new updates you know yeah 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 you can see it on everything. Like you can, if you look at the trends where Amazon was going, right? Then this comes in and it just skyrockets that trend. But that's where it was going. Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, right. The things, department stores and things like that were already declining. So that just, you know, skyrocketed their decline, or not skyrocket, but whatever. Fast track us. <laughs> fast, uh, yeah, fast track their decline as it was going to be anyways. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we're, it's, yeah, it's the new world is the future. <laughs> a digital future, like the new world is 
completely digital. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess not completely because, like, you know, we we're talking about essential service workers. But, like, we are emerging from this in a completely different landscape, landscape than when we went in. Mm-hmm. Um, do you, so, like, do you think rent prices will drop then? Do you think it will be, like, subsidized maybe? Or, like, I don't know how. Because, like, all right, if – so with demand – Actually, yeah. no, 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 no. Basic economics is higher demand, lower price. No, wait, what? Higher demand, higher prices. Lower demand, lower prices. So yes. Yeah. So lower demand for renting means lower prices, maybe. Like th- think about it. So downtown Toronto, everyone wanted to live in downtown Toronto because that's where all the jobs are. But if it's if it's online, there's less demand for real estate yeah. in yeah. downtown Toronto. So those prices are going to drop. Yeah, I, I, I was hearing someone talk about that. I don't. It, But it's not just about... It's about the location, right? If you... Everything around there, right? Like the restaurant or like... I mean, like the, it would be more like a takeout, but like the ambiance of that kind of thing, like you're in the heart of the city versus... But it's like, but now because of Zoom and all this, like this digital world, it's like what heart of what city? We're all like confined to our houses. Well, yeah, but that won't be forever, right? It is for now. Yeah, true. It won't be forever. Like even if you do it, like you you would only work from home, but it's... With those people that used to be living in the city want to live... Not in the city. I think their point was to live in the city, right? You mean like the convenience and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other, all that stuff that comes with it. Oh, so like jobs Uber. aside, it's like, okay, but I also have everything close quarters to me. I don't yeah. need a car. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, that makes sense. Totally. Yeah. What, what, what I think this new world that we're facing is really going to create is like more of a rift between techies and non-techies. You know, it's almost you're going to have, like, a, a class system, you know. Like, mm-hmm. like, yeah. like almost like how, like, you know, like, third world countries and then first world countries, there's such a huge divide because they don't have the resources we do. Right. But I think there's going to be a, another class system within first world countries, which is, like, techies and non-techies. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Right. Like, even at all right. Let, let's let's take it like not at an adult level. Like, let's because children are the foundation for the future, right? So it's like you're gonna have a kid that have the resources to like understand how technology works. Have like so it's like it's like oh you don't even have a Twitch page, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that might become the new normal in itself, and then you're gonna have a class system where like these these kids are like like trying to like cool in the future for children will be like techiness. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 It's like, I mean, it's technically already happening, but yeah. But again, like you said, like everything got fast tracked. So it's like now if your kid doesn't have all the latest streaming software and like the, the knowledge and the know how to actually get themselves online, it's like, Mm -hmm. Again, the divide between people who, like, for example, like now I'm seeing everyone, like, so I I follow certain people and like people who never did live chats on Instagram are doing it now, right? And it's like, it's because they're trying to catch up to the cool. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's so like, it's so like janky in the way they're doing it because they don't have... (laughs) the knowledge or the expertise that these other people had. And that right there is the divide. That's like the class system right there. You know, it's yeah, not, gonna be, it's, yeah. not gonna, it's not going to be rich and poor because we're going to have UBI. It'll be like techie and non techie. Right. Yeah. It's, it's understanding how to use that. Yeah, totally. In the best way. Yeah. 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 That, all right, that, that we actually exhausted the list. I was like, hey, "Are we going to finish it today?" Yes, we did. So, do you have any other? Do you have any other uh, final thoughts 
or like no i'm just i mean i don't know yeah like we'll see where this goes and i um, mean it's it's gonna be an interesting future oh, actually wait sorry i thought of one more thing um you know how like i was like oh i miss movie theaters and stuff mm-hmm so another thing that'll get fast tracked is um, you can rent m- movies that are in theaters now, but for your home. But it's really expensive, right? Because you have to license it. Yeah. So like only rich people could do it. Um, but I wonder if that's going to be well, fast tracked. You mean, tra- what, what? You mean before, before? You're saying before? Before, yeah, yeah. Like, um, yeah, okay. like uh, they were talking about it before on this podcast, like how how – you can get this box and then it's the movies that are playing in the theater, but you can play it in your home, but you have to pay like so much money. Like it's very okay. expensive to do it. Right, so I wonder right. if they're just going to fast track it where it's like all of these movies are being like, like instead of opening up Cineplexes, it'll be like the Cineplex app and those movies will be there. You know what I'm saying? No, uh, I mean, they're already doing that, right? There are some things that were... Really? Like just, what? Like what? No, like, not big budget ones. But oh, like, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Like, you can see it happening where these ones, there were supposed to be in theaters, but we'll, we'll just put it out on DVD digital? or whatever. No yeah, way, digital. oh, okay. Yeah, digital, not DVD. <laughs> they, that's happening like, right now because of COVID? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fascinating. Put, put, it, put it on iTunes or... Wherever else, yeah. Wow. So, like, like, yeah. like the the Capone movie with um. Oh, Tom Hardy. Yeah. Yeah. It's supposed to be in theaters, but it's oh. on. It's on iTunes or wherever else you can rent things. But I heard that movie wasn't that good. <laughs> so. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But I'm just saying, like, that would have been in theaters, right? Interesting. And then all you have to do is you put it on iTunes, and then to to watch the movie, you pay the the ticket price. You know, like yeah, whatever, minutes. whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah, whichever. I don't know if it'll be a same price as a ticket or whatever the rental price is. Or you buy it. I don't. I don't know. If, I think that maybe you'll be able to buy it right right away. Interesting. So it would be like the thirty dollar, whatever. Mm, yeah. Whatever. Like a, like a, like as if it's like you're purchasing the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah straight to DVD because no more. Yeah, that'll change like the whole press run. You know, they have press tours when movies mm-hmm. come out and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that'll change. Interesting. Uh, yeah, that that will shift. You can't really do that the same way. I, I really they wouldn't like... want to uh, bring them traveling around the world. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, totally. Totally. Yeah. I I like that. That uh, that's that's the the best summary of like um like what you said mm-hmm. of of like the new normal coming out of this is really just a f- fast track to the future. Yeah. Yeah, because I think you the really first see it. you really see it. There's, yeah, yeah, you do see it. Yeah, but they're saying I think uh, Christopher Nolan's movie might be the first one. Oh yeah, yeah I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Tenet's one of the first ones in theaters. But what if they don't open up? Yeah, that's why the new trailer that came out says will be in theaters soon, or something like that. So oh they, they can't, really? Originally, the date was July, I think it was, and so they can't locked down on a date i think as of now until whenever they reopen it but we'll be in theaters that's what they're saying wow okay so it might be when it, it might be the first one that that'll be there when they will reopen but you know like movie theaters is the one last experience that i really loved where it's like you go to this <laughs> place and you you can you're fully because the screen is so big you're fully immersed in it the sound is so loud like you shut down your phone for like that hour and a half two hours yeah you yeah. know whereas like if you're at home it's like okay i can just check my phone really quick oh put it on pause i'm gonna go to the bathroom you know what i mean it's like you're not you're not like locked in it's not an event you know what i'm saying right well for me it was different right like when i'm into the movie i'm into the movie true true yeah okay yeah, that, that's true that's true and that's because true, it yeah. works, it works differently for different people. But yeah, uh, I think that there there will be still theaters around, just not as many. Right, it's it's the social, the social thing that I really liked that yeah. you're missing from, from like doing it digitally. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, like when when the crowd goes, like the reactions of the crowd. It, yeah, it, yeah, exactly. It adds to the influence. Yeah, or the experience. Not yeah. That. And then, like yeah. at the end, when somebody claps, and you're like, "Oh wow!" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, yeah, 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 totally. Now, yeah, I will miss that if it goes. Yeah, well, just you know, it'll come back for some time. Though. <laughs> so do you, so, do you think? Do you think it's our right, final final thing? Do you think it's, um, it's like we're at this point where there's no return or do you think it'll normalize back to how it was like five years down no. the line, 10 years down the line? Oh, you mean like, uh, before, before this whole no. thing happened? No, it, there will be changes that, that, have, that will happen that will stay forever. So you think, so you really or do think is. we're facing a new world? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah. I, it just fast tracked everything. But yes. Yeah. I, like but, some of these companies were gonna die anyways, right? To totally. Yeah. But again, it was like if we stopped it for two weeks and then everything went back to normal, no, nothing would have changed. But right, we really are at the point of no return. Yeah. 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 There are. You can already see it. The damage has been done. So. Yeah, it's, it's a deep cut. It's a deep yeah. cut. Like, yeah. And the longer this goes on, it's like the deeper and deeper the cut goes. Yeah. Almost every day you're hearing about these bigger stores closing down so many of them, right? Yeah, totally, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> this will... It has changed. So, and it will stay. Yeah. But all you can really do is like learn to surf, <laughs> cause like at this point, yeah, yeah, like nothing's settled, right? No. Actually, you yeah. know, be a crazy bust. Like at the end of this, like, like if, like, let's say six months down the line, everything's exactly the way it once was. That would be ridiculous. I'd be like, wow, that was a total anticlimactic experience. It's almost like we <laughs> went. It was like a big nap. You know, we went into like a sleep. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's not a new normal. It's more like we just took a nap for for a bit, <laughs> which would suck. Like that would be kind of crappy, because I'm excited. Yeah. I mean, there will be some things that will come back, but there it has, there is a lot of changes that's already happened, right? Like, some people want some of these things that they had before. Uh, maybe like frosh and these sort of things. They will come back, right? Oh, like, right, right. Yeah, 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 totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. But no, no, you know what it is? The market will decide. Uh, that's true. Yeah, it's yeah. mainly about the market. It's, uh, it's, uh, you know, there's this theory, um, this, like, um, uh, economic principle called the invisible hand. And what mm -hmm. it is is, like, we think we know something, but it's really the market is guiding what it is we do it's the invisible yeah. hand that's pushing us you know yeah and it's like yeah. that is yeah you're right it's like things will come back but it's like the market will decide what comes back and doesn't come back yeah 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 exactly yeah all right yeah it's a good one good one yeah new normal hopefully ubi and at the end of this we'll see what the market demands yeah mm -hmm. all right yeah Till next week, uh, yeah, pick up stuff on zenrealclothingco.com or check out the free playlist. But if you're going to pick something up, use SG Podcasts at checkout for select items, 20% off select items. Take it easy, Vish. Peace.